All right, lads, so the bonus ability slot is actually going to be releasing tomorrow. Very excited about this, but we actually did get a lot of information today going over what skills we can actually put onto our characters, and that has killed the hype for a lot of people because a lot of skills weren't included. So jumping straight into it, let's look at the skill list. I've already seen it, and it definitely could have been a lot better. It's very disappointing what Caleb have done. For example, a lot of the skills are just like stat as much, right? So we have a prior situation, basically every duration skill all the way down to weakening or lacerate. Every status element but drain is actually here which is understandable and unfortunately it's only 55% they couldn't even give us 100% which kind of does suck but it can still be pretty useful for certain characters if you do want to use them in guild quests but at the same time this I don't think anyone is going to be putting onto their character so I'm not even going to talk about it because it's not even worth mentioning right Scrolling down though, this is where we start to see a lot more useful skills that I can definitely see some usage of. So first we have Prevent Brave Battle Healing. This is kind of a waste too. There's barely any characters that can actually heal in PvP. And the ones that can, for example, the main one, the most big, the biggest threat in PvP right now that can actually heal is actually Tsukushima. But when he does heal, it's not that big of a heal and he mainly does heal from his soul bomb. But when he does use his soul bomb, he's pretty much killing the team that you are going up against, right? So... It's not that useful. I really can't see the use of that. Very rarely are you going to lose to a team because they outhealed you. It's very, very rare. So I really don't see the use of that. But hey, maybe in the future it could become a bit more useful. Then we have weakened defense and or weakened attack. Now weakened attack is kind of a throwaway. Weakened attack is not even that useful. You don't even need it. But weakened defense, this is where it becomes a pretty exciting. So you can actually stack it to two times. So meaning that if your character already has weakened defense and then you put on weakened defense again, it now means that you're even doing more more damage once you do inflict that weakened defense so very cool right here and the fact that every character now can get that is going to be pretty good for example in guild quest if you are using a character that just needs an extra bit of dps and you're just about to beat it but you can't do it weakened defense is going to allow you to do that so i can definitely see the use of weakened defense is going to be a must have for any kind of guild quest main runner if you do need that extra bit of dps then we also have sprinter plus one and long stride so I did not expect Longstride to be here. The fact that they didn't include Frenzy, Flurry, Guard Break, a Disabler, Adrenaline, Long Reach is kind of disappointing. But they included Longstride, which is a rarer skill than all of those combined, funny enough. So it's kind of funny, but it's also kind of exciting. Longstride is a very fun and unique skill. It basically gives you extra distance on your Flash Step. And the fact that you can now give a character an extra Flash Step and Longstride is actually kind of exciting, making it so every character, for the most part, can be like Sofon. So that's kind of cool. I really do like that. And going back to Sprinter, you can actually now give Barn Ken Sprinter plus one, making it so he's now actually usable. This is what should have been happening for other characters, right? If we could have given characters like Fowls and Yababa Yachiru and Byakuya Frenzy, it would have made them very good. It wouldn't have made them OP, but it would have made them usable. So it was kind of disappointing they didn't even include those two skills. Frenzy and Flurry, in my opinion, should have been included because it's a must-have nowadays for every character. Every character's coming out of Flurry. Every character's coming out of Frenzy. And the ones that don't have it just fall behind even more. And you know when their resurrections do come, they're not going to get Frenzy. They're not going to get Flurry. So... It's really disappointing that Keller didn't include those, but moving on, let's talk about what we do actually have, right? So, Sprinter plus one, long stride, very cool. Pierce barrier and start barrier, kind of throwaways, don't really see the use of those. It, the only use for start barrier I can see is for your max transcend SP characters. If you are using a max transcender, let's say, for example, 10 years later version of Ichigo, it can be pretty good, and it's only going to be good if you go against a team that doesn't have Tsukushima or Drugum, because at that point, you know, they're not damaging those characters, and they're pretty much just going to die after the use those strong attacks so okay star barrier is okay it's like you could put it on retsu but again it's not that useful in my opinion i see some people saying that they're gonna put the star barrier onto drugum and Tsukushima. don't do that it's an absolute waste the star barrier is gonna wear off before the invincibility wears off so don't do that and then we have pierce barrier which again can be kind of useful but not needed and the last skill for this page is the hit hidden enemies now i see a lot of people say they're gonna put that onto their characters in my point of view, you have an opportunity to put two skills onto a character that they don't actually have. Why are you going to waste hit hidden enemies onto a character when you can use an accessory? And sure, you could say that now that you have it onto a skill instead of an accessory means you can now have more DPS, but... Do you really need more DPS? If you have the character at level 10 attack or SP, you're most likely one-shotting things in the first place. So I can I don't miss the use of this skill right here. I know it's actually a good skill that you can use, but I wouldn't recommend putting on a character, right? I would definitely recommend putting other stuff on that you can't get from accessories and or links. 
And then scrolling down to the other abilities that we can actually put onto our characters, we have Invasion, which is Dodge Rate. Don't put down any single character, it's not worth it. We have Large Dish Survival 100%, very useful for any kind of NAD character in my opinion, especially melee based ones, and also good for your PvP characters in my opinion. This is going to be a must-have for your PvP characters. Then we have Full Stam Damage and also Low Stam, which, keep in mind, is Enhanced, 25% and also 35%, very interesting stuff right there. We have an Enhanced Stamina Recovery Link, can be pretty useful for co-op and stuff like that. We have Increased Crystal and Draw Drop rate plus 17 percent pretty okay i don't I, you can put that on a character this one's going to be kind of niche but what you can do is actually build a specific character that's going to be used to farming crystals and draws so i can definitely see the use of this on maybe like five or so characters so i'm not going to complain about that all too much and then we have damage to status omen enemies right going from uh, paralyzed enemies all the way to lacerated enemies and you can see that some of them are 20 percent and some of them are 40 percent so pretty cool stuff and then the last skill that we do have is actually healer which is only useful on characters that can actually heal from the SA2 but even then it's a very small increase so I really wouldn't even recommend actually rocking healer it's, it's not really that useful so that right there lads is the list of the skills that you can put onto our character so again not what we wanted we wanted better skills but it's still useful right you can still put on some good skills long stride sprinter plus one weak in defense are very good ones in my opinion large survival full stand boost low stand boost crystal drop rate and increased damage to x enemies are actually gonna be pretty useful these are the ones I think most people are gonna be putting onto their characters but again it would have been a lot better had we had you know even long range adrenaline those skills aren't even that op i don't know why they didn't include it very disappointing and because of that i know for a fact a lot of people aren't gonna even bother with this update because it's not even worth their time if you was able to put flurry onto a character that didn't originally have it then it would have been worth it so for me i'm still gonna be doing it for most of my characters if i actually can it's gonna be a massive grind but i am actually up for it but i know a lot of people out there aren't gonna even bother with this update now one thing i do want to actually mention is that they do talk about the character level colors so what they do mention here is that as a result of this update, a lot of characters are basically going to be going back to green. And then they mention here that we also plan to make some adjustments to the character level indicator in a future update to make it easier to tell at a glance how far a character has been powered up. So what I believe here is that in the last five or so days since they've announced this update, they saw the amount of backlash that they got regarding the character levels. So the fact that they haven't included it in this update could potentially mean that they were just lazy and they didn't think about it, but it could also mean that they saw the outcry from the player base and decided that we're going to actually maybe add a new color in a future update. So... Hold out, lads. Our characters are going to be looking green for, like, the first maybe month or two. But maybe in the future, we will get another color. Maybe level 10 Link Short characters would go back to green. Max Transcendent characters would go back to purple. And then maybe if you do get a Max Transcendent character to 2020, 20, 20, maybe then you get a new color. But we have to wait and see. And then now we have the Inheritance Trial Quest, which will be dropping at 9 a.m. tomorrow morning for me. I will be live streaming it, so do come out, lads. We're going to be farming all day. Very excited for this. So, what we do know is a few things, right? So, firstly, the Iron Skin. Some enemies, it does say some, so not every enemy in this quest has the Iron Skin ability where they take a reduced amount of damage unless you do inflict them with a status omen. Now, the damage reduction does seem quite notable but i think if you bring a max transcendent character into it with the four players that are there you're pretty much gonna like not even notice the iron skin ability unless the bosses start to have it then it could be kind of noteworthy right but the general idea of what this quest wants you to do is bring characters that can inflict status omens and one cool thing that i do like about this is that this specific quest the one that's gonna be available for three weeks right only has hollow enemies meaning that if you are someone that does have an increased chance to inflict a status omen against a certain type of enemies it's now gonna be very useful because there aren't going to be two types of enemies in a quest like you do have in IZ. For example, for the first three weeks, this one's going to be out. Maybe it's going to rotate uh, every single month. Characters like the Christmas Maruka and also the Machine Society Nemu, who have an increased chance to inflict their status elements against hollow enemies, are going to be very good for this specific quest. So I kind of do appreciate what they are doing for this quest. It's making those characters that have the increased chance to inflict status elements even more useful now. Not needed, like Link's or Potion characters, but useful. And they're going to be ideal for this quest. But again, not needed as especially if you do have a character max transcended. Also, do keep in mind to even attempt this quest, your character does need to be at level 555 link slots. You need to have them at level 15 or more. Do keep that in mind, right? And the enemy killer abilities for this quest is going to be Aranka killers. So you don't want to be bringing your Aranka characters. Keep them away because they are going to be taking increased damage. Now, what you see here is the time zone for this quest, right? So this is in my time. Do keep that in mind. So 11 to 1, 4 in the morning to 6, 9 in the morning to 11, 2 p.m. to 4, and then 6 p.m. to 8. So 
pretty decent times. Like, they're not too bad. But again, in my opinion, this should have been available all day, every day, right? It's kind of annoying that they are limiting it because this is encouraging modders, right? Modders are now going to have increased amounts of runs because they can clear it in like less than 20 seconds. So it kind of does suck, but it is what it is. We're going to have to take it as it is. I'm going to be farming it. Hopefully, the drop rates for this quest are actually good considering the fact that they are limiting it. I would really hope that they are. And you can see here, yeah, these are the item drops. This is what you're going to be farming, the super links or potions to get your characters to 2020. 20. So that right there, lads, was the update that we'll be dropping tomorrow, going over some of the skills and the also the new inheritance trials. Personally, I'm very excited for this. The excitement level has decreased from maybe a 10 to an 8, because if we could have gotten extra skills, it would have been even better. But I know a lot of people are going to be disappointed with the fact that you can't get Flurry, you can't get Guard Break. Uh, a lot of other skills that should have been included aren't actually there, and that's going to stop them from actually even bother farming in this. But for me, I'm trying to max with my characters again. It's going to take a lot of energy, probably going to take potentially two plus years, but I really do hope that it gets easy over time. So that being said, let's hope you guys did enjoy the video. In the comments below, let me know what you do think about this. How do you feel about the uh, bonus ability slots that we can actually get? Are you disappointed? Are you still excited like I am? Let me know, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.